This is the Small Town Big Talk Show, the only place where you can listen in on real life conversations about the challenges and the joys of living in a small town. I'm your host, Rebecca Undam, and each week a guest will join me as we tackle one topic that more than likely we're all feeling or have thought about, but of course, no one wants to talk about. Let's chat. My guest on today's episode is Annie Schlecht, and my girl Annie has a gypsy soul, and she lives in a town of 200 people in North Dakota. So I sit down with Annie to talk about how she nurtures that sense of adventure and fire in her belly without physically leaving her small town. So be sure to listen in her. She talks a lot about specifically how to find your zen. It's what her whole business is about. So listen in for that. But you're going to love the ideas that she has for helping you find inspiration right in your own backyard. Happy listening. All right. Sister, you ready to talk about your gypsy soul? I am. Let's do it. (laughs) Okay, so what I love about this, Annie, you don't know this, um, but on my YouTube channel on, let's see, a couple of episodes ago, uh, this lovely gal like comments on several videos and she, she asked, specifically asked the question, how do you you know, do, she said, have you lived other places? And do you know women that have lived other places? And, and she kept coming back to like, she moved to her small town and she loves the chores that she does. So she must, they must work animals to a degree. Like, I don't know even what they are. Cause she was very vague about it, but she said, but I still have this really adventurous spirit. And she's like, I don't know how to reconcile that. Do you have any tips? And I was like, Ooh, wait, <laughs> wait for Monday. Cause me and my friend Annie are going to talk about this. So there was that, that there was that, that made me think about this. And then, um, you and I were recently together in Costa Rica, which was really fun. Mm -hmm. We were there with a company. It was a company trip for our hubbies. And we were talking a lot about, um, well, a couple things we talked about specifically. So Annie, you live in Wimbledon, North Dakota. How big is Wimbledon? 200. 200. Okay. So tiny, (laughs) tiny, right? And we were talking about how getting away to somewhere where you can breathe air that's like fresh and there's living things, not, right. not creatures, but plants, <laughs> vegetation. And then we talked about grounding, right? Like in oh, North yeah. Dakota right now, people just don't get this, but like there's almost zero connection to actual living nature at this time of the year. Everything's dead. Everything's dormant. You absolutely can't ground yourself to anything because you freeze to death, right? right. So we talked about that a little bit in Costa Rica. And then the other thing that was like, Annie is the perfect person for this topic was I recently shared that I no longer have that feeling. Like for the longest time when I moved back here to my hometown, I would travel for work anywhere. I mean, anywhere, (laughs) it didn't matter where, like Fargo. I felt this way about Jamestown, which is only a town of 17,000 people, right? Like I would travel anywhere bigger than Oaks and I would immediately get overcome with that feeling of, Oh, I could live here. Right. I just wish I could live here. (laughs) And it was never because I didn't love my hometown. It was just because I still had that. I don't know. It was like the adventurous thing Mm -hmm. that bubbled up inside me. And I just felt like, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it is, but you and I talked about it. And when I posted that last week, you were like, I still struggle with this every single day. And I was like, every oh. single day. Yes. And we're talking about it. So sister, tell me, what does this look like for you? And you know, what, what does it look like for you? What does it feel like for you? Like just when you said, like just going into another community, like tomorrow I'm going up to mine up because I am watching my niece and nephew for my sister while she goes away. So right. just going up to Minot, North Dakota. Like I'm still in North Dakota, but just that feeling of like, I get to get out of here for a little bit. Not that I want to be away from my husband or anything and granted my kids are coming with, but just the hustle and bustle of a city and the change and the adventure. Like you said, it's just, I don't care if it's just going up to target, like target in general, like, yay, I'm, I'm so far away from a target that it's ridiculous. All the praise hands for target. Yep. Uh, I totally um, get it. Just to get the hell out of here and have a little bit of change in my environment, my routine. I mean, I think for you and I, it's a bigger struggle too, because we work from home. So we're not going to a new office to a different location with talking with other people every single day. Like we're talking with people, but like internet girlfriends is not the same as being, you know, being in real life. life. Yep. Yep. Um, For sure. But yeah, I have struggled with this 
ever since moving to Wimbledon. And I, I feel like I probably will. Like I've always just kind of been, I, I've told you that I feel like my soul just belongs in a, either a bigger community, like a larger city or somewhere like get me out in the woods in a cabin where I have tons of scenery mountains and like just some tranquility in terms of my environment. So. Right. So why is environment so important to you? This segues kind of nicely into what you do for work and such, but then is my word. Like I'm, I've always been about my environment. Like even as a little girl, like I would rearrange my room to be like, how does it feel with my bed over here versus over here? And can, when I look out the window from my bed in this angle, like what does it make me happy? So like the whole art of feng shui and like the energy of a room and just feeling one with where you're at, like I need that. I constantly need that. Um, and so like when you're talking even about just grounding and earthing, um, mm -hmm. so people don't know what earthing is, it's seriously like you connecting with the ground, like right. putting your feet into the dirt, getting in like gardening or just feeling the electrical um, vibrations of the earth, right? We don't get walking, that walking barefoot in grass. Oh my God. I'm the biggest. We'll do it. I mean, that'll do it for people. If people are like, I don't get how to ground, take right. your shoes off and walk around in your yard. Exactly. We can't you're not, do that now. Right. We can't do that now. And it's awful. Like, so I always like when I talk about earthing with other people too, like there's technology you can get like some bed sheets you like legit plug into the outlet. Um, not my favorite, but still like at least it gives you something when you're up here in North Dakota. Right. But yeah, so anyway, Zen is just my word. Like I, I feel like everybody just needs to have an environment where you're going to manifest the energy that you want to have in your life. Right. Um, and so if that means that you live in a tiny community, like Zen the crap out of your house, like do what makes you happy. And I think the whole Marie Kondo thing right now, it's a hundred percent. Like everything that I do is like, okay, first, like, get your environment set. Does it spark joy for you? And if there's anything in your environment that doesn't make you happy or gives you that mm, feeling, like even if it's a photo of a family member or something, take it out of your room, make it Zen, like right. get, yourself, get yourself set up for success. So <laughs> what, what, what did that specifically, so you've had this in you forever, which I love that you like, even as a little girl, you were like maneuvering things around to make you feel better. But how did this dovetail into what you professionally do? Right. So obviously such a tie and it's such a beautiful arc. And I also just want to say, we're specifically talking about this adventurous spirit that you have, right. And that you're in this very small town, but I also think you can lend a lot of support to other women that because the business that you built is very unique and it's very special and you do it from home and you left a very solid job right. to pursue it. So I think there's just lots of things people can take away from you, which I love. So I was an occupational therapist um, and working, I would commute, you know, to a bigger community to do this job. Mm -hmm. And because of where I live, like I needed to be closer to home with my kids and all that. So I'm like, okay, I still have this adventurous spirit. How can I make this happen and work for me professionally too in my tiny town? So I decided to start my own online company and become um, a sleep consultant. So I work virtually with clients all over the world, right from my home. And it's so unconventional and that's kind of the word I think when I hear of like a gypsy soul, just like adventurous and unconventional and everything that about me has been a hundred percent unconventional. Like I was the first person to be doing this in North Dakota. Right. Um, so it was terrifying and scary. And so can I real quick, um, for yeah. the people that maybe don't know, cause sure. I will just say sleep consultants when you for, I remember when I first met you and we had cross paths before, but I didn't know you well. Right. And when you first said sleep consultant, I was thinking like at a sleep clinic. Sleep apnea. Like right, sleep. right, right. Where people come in and they spend and they do a study with you. Right. But that's not what you do. So for just for the benefit of people that are like, well, what is a sleep consultant? Right. What is so it that you actually do? Sleep consultant, like I work one-on-one -on -one with people and I started with pediatrics because this is my jam. Like that was what I was a pediatric occupational therapist. Right. And it's mostly teaching parents how to teach their kiddos the independent sleep skills so that they can sleep through the night and so that they can grow and develop and so that parents can feel zen and like they know what the hell they're doing and they're not frustrated and hate their lives because they're sleep deprived. Right. Um, so looking at all natural remedies um, to get their kiddos to sleep well, educating them on sleep, 
um, looking at the routine, looking at the environment, making sure every single part of it is all wrapped up with the science and also like the whole, like looking at it holistically. So mind, body, spirit, um, um, look at every single aspect of that for the kids. And then I also just started working now more with adults too and letting them realize that your body is capable of so much more and that you can fall asleep without all of the sleep meds. It's just that we have to retrain your brain and your body to do so. Right. I love your work so much. Um, when we were in Costa Rica, we were out to dinner, the four of us, your husband and you and me and my husband. And my, we were talking about this. Like my husband has what I like to call terrible sleep habits, but it's just what he's used to. Right. And, you know, all the things that you talk about, basically, I'm like looking at him like, can we just do those already? You know? And again, that's some of the tricks. But I think I work and network with a lot. I have a lot of friends that are business owners or friends that are entrepreneurs. And sleep is something that eludes a lot of us. And like for me, there's underlying stress mm -hmm. that wakes me up just like bam, middle of the night, I'm up and I'm like, oh my God, I can't sleep. Yeah. So I really think I love, um, well, I love your approach, A. I mean, anybody can just pop a sleeping pill, but that's not the same thing, right? I mean, it's, it's not. And that it's all about the environment. And I, I just love everything about what you do, obviously. I mean, you're one of my people, but it's like, you know, the idea that we get, and this is why I love you so much because you're reminding everybody, yourself included, whenever you need that reminder, that we get to set the tone. Like we get to choose the energy. We get to choose our environment. And now when you're in a small town, you don't get to choose that environment. But like you said, so even from a tip standpoint, um, you were like, zen the crap out of your house. Right. You know, make sure that your actual dwelling space is a space that feels very zen to you. Because, yeah, you don't get to control what happens in your small town. Right. right? So, oh, yeah. So I'm sorry. I'm, tang I'm tangenting all over the place. But I, I just, I think all of it ties together, you know? Big time. So how do you zen your house? Like, what are things that you do? Okay, so one, one prime example I have is in our backyard. Like, we have a huge, beautiful backyard. It's amazing. We, have, we had all these crazy weeds and flowers from the previous owner. who She was, like, great at, at um, landscaping and flowers and all that. Like, I'm not. I'm terrible. Like, so we, we put, like, pavers back there. I create a fountain back there, a little hammock swing. There was a huge pile of bushes that looks like a little tiny mini forest that my husband wanted to tear out. And I was like, hell to the no, like we're keeping this in and we're creating a little magical forest for our girls to go back and play in. And so like, I've kind of created this like cute little space back there where I can go sit and play tea party with a little like tea set and table with my girls and take my shoes off and like dig my feet in the ground back there. And it kind of feels like, huh, I'm, I might be in like Washington or maybe in the deeps of Minnesota. Like even going to Minnesota for me is adventurous. But just to create that and find little tiny ways that you can put that sense of adventure into you and your family. Right. And, like, so, and I call it the magic forest. Like, girls, do you want to go play in the magic forest? And I think I like it more than them. But in the summer, like, it just fills in so beautifully with all these little trees or the leaves and stuff. And it's just like this own little oasis back there for us. Right. Um, that's like one of my tips. Like, granted, if you don't have the backyard of all backyards, whatever, do what you can, you know. There's always things you can do. You just have to be creative and open-minded about it. Right. And so then for my house too, like for zenning out our house, like I just make sure that everything in every single room makes me feel good and makes my girls feel good. Um, so like we even had, you know, photos of old college friends who maybe I had like, oh, like there's one little picture of them up. And I was like, I had one like negative experience with them lately. And like, I kept going back to that memory and so I would take that photo down in my room and be like, okay, like I still love this person and I can look at their picture maybe on Facebook or something, but that one photo of that one night I had a bad memory of, so I took it down. Right. You see how that energy can just be there. So I don't know, I guess it's, there's so many different things that you can do to zen out your, your space. But like I just talked about, <laughs> my cleaning lady just left and I just got done staging my house with Palo Santo wood. <laughs> right. So what is that? What do you, do you actually okay. physically light it on fire? literally light it on fire. So I have sage right here. So this isn't the same thing. You light it on fire and you let like the smoke just come in and it just comes in and you can just say your own little intentions or prayers or whatever you need to about like, let's cleanse out any negative energies, any negative, you know, any negative energies in this space that no longer serve a purpose for me. Thank you for the purpose you want to serve. Release it to the world because this is going to be a happy space for me. I'm right. going to my attitude about this area. Like if I can't change the energy of 
like the community I'm living in, I'm going to change it in my house. Um, so you have to take an active role in that kind of stuff. And there's, there's a lot of things you can do to change that. Right. I actually, for those that are listening to this and are like, oh my gosh, I don't really want to burn. Yeah, sick. <laughs> so on Amazon, I found, um, like the equivalent of burnt sage in a spray. Mm -hmm. So it's yep. just, again, I think, I think so much of it, and I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel like so much of it is about the intention behind it anyway. A hundred percent intention. You know, and whether people think this is like woo, woo kind of crap, it's, it's no different than you saying a prayer right. before and blessing your food, blessing your space is the same thing. And why not say a prayer for every single room that you have in your house? Right. Um, you know, just let that, let that energy be shifted. So what else do you do with your gypsy soul in gypsy a town of 200 people? Well, let's see. I think just getting out to with my kids to do random things. Like we were cooped up here in North Dakota, right? It's been freezing cold. Right. So just taking a little staycation in Jamestown, like we went to the hotel and just went down the water slide a million times one night and stayed overnight in the hotel, which seriously just lifted my spirits tremendously. So if you are a person who feels so stagnant and you just need to get the hell out, there's no shame in that. Right. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll um, I, the, the hardest thing about what we're talking about is that there's some privilege that comes with this, right? Like I hear you. And I know that I, I know that. And I never want my advice to be like, just, you know, just go spend money. <laughs> money doesn't fix everything. But no. so clearly if you're able to do that, absolutely do that. But I even think that like, so if you can't leave, then build a fort in your basement right. with your kids, you know? And right. again, it's not just for your kids, it's for you. It's to get back in touch with that playfulness, uh -huh. that silliness. That's actually one of my core desired feelings for the year because I'm did. i doing Daniel Laporte's planner. And playfulness is one of my core desired feelings because I feel so much better when I'm being silly. Right. Like that's for me. I mean, that's not for everybody. But I think, again asking yourself, what is it that I feel like I'm missing? And then asking yourself the question, how can I conjure that up or nurture some of that? How can I create it right where I'm at? Because it doesn't always require leaving, but I do think leaving is a huge deal. Okay. Like if you can, if you can get away even for a half day or a day, just change up your scenery. Some, I do think it helps a ton. It down, like, Cause I have a three and a four year old. So going into Jamestown, like that's where we usually get our groceries. Right. My husband, I don't really need any groceries. Why are you going to Jamestown? I'm like, I just need to get the hell out of the house. So we'll go to the library or we'll go, like, I just go let the, my kids run at their mall, like up there and play. Yeah, there's a big empty lake. Like, whatever it is, just get, get out of your house for a while. Re-energize yourself because the more you're staying cooped up in your home, the worse it's going to get. And I feel for all the women that are working from home like we are, yeah. I um, really think sometimes just packing up your computer and going anywhere else. Right. And like, yes, and that's just it. Like I live in a community of 200, right? Tiny. Tiny. We, have a, we have a grocery store and a cafe, which we're so lucky to have. And I just packed up for a, you know, a little bit and went up and had some work time up there and just was re-energized by, by the conversation I had with two of the ladies from the store. It was perfect. Right. So it doesn't have to be, like you said, it doesn't have to be an expensive staycation at a hotel. It can be as simple as just getting out and having a conversation with someone. And to tie it back to like the transplant video that you just did with Missy, um, right. I feel like having that gypsy soul, like I love new people that come into the community. Like I feed off of this. So like I'm the person that if we are ever out to eat or at the bar or something, somebody new walks in, I'm like, Hey, who's that person? I should go introduce myself. My husband's like, calm down. Like they might not want to talk to you. Well, I just feed off of it because it's just that new fresh energy and it's kind of nice because then it helps people who aren't, you know, the, the, the transplants that come in feel welcome. Right. Like Missy said, be open and just go talk to them, say hello. Like that right there can help energize you too. Right. And I'm going to say this, like, I was just thinking about this today because like oftentimes I'll, let's say I'll go to the post office mm -hmm. and someone will walk in and it's somebody that I've seen before, but I don't know their name. And then I'm going to tell you the hesitation I have as somebody who's like a lifer from the community, right? Like I, I, I came back, I returned, but I sometimes look at them and I think, should I know who they are? And then that's my hesitation, right? Like I don't want to say anything, but I, what I really think is important is to just say, you know, maybe I feel like I should know who you are. You can even just say that, right? Like I feel like I should know who you are, but I don't know your name. 
you know, I'm Rebecca. I think there's right? no in that. I'm, I'm the kind of person that like, I would much rather look like an asshole and be kind and open and welcome to you to right. invite the opportunity in rather than to just be like, I'm going to offend you and we're just going to continue this wall here. I, I agree. And I think too many of us move through the world like that, like afraid to say something because I think we're afraid of looking stupid. Right. Oh, big time. Don't you big think? Time. And it's just, it isn't, you're, we're missing a lot of opportunities for connection, I think. And I would find, I have found that with even like my, myself and my career, because I am so unconventional, what I do is so unconventional, even as an occupational therapist, like people don't really know what an occupational therapist is or does. Nope. So they're not going to ever really approach me to ask about my work because they don't want to look stupid. You know what I mean? And I'm the same way. I do the same thing. If I don't know you, I'm like, oh, I should, maybe I shouldn't. But then at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm always going to jump in because I don't care if I look like an idiot. Right. Um, but it's okay. Just be humble about the questions you're asking and, and go for it. No well, question. It's about question. connection, right? Yeah. Yes. I mean, if, if I'm asking you questions because I genuinely want to know who you are and I want to make you feel connected and I want to connect to you, then there's that feeling of looking stupid should kind of fall away. Right. You know? Right. So the other thing too, um, I was going to ask what you think about this. Cause like, I think one of the things that stirs up the gypsy soul in me the most are just the opportunities to try cool new things that just don't come along here. <laughs> you know, like, like for example, this was like a few years ago now. Um, this woman who does yoga in a town about half an hour from us, she hosted a woman that taught a belly dancing class. Awesome. <laughs> right? And I remember people straight up making fun of me. And it was, uh, well, three of my girlfriends. I was like, you guys, we should go do this. And we got in the car and we drove over there. And it was so neat. It was so fun. And, right. and yet we got plenty of grief about it. Like, oh, who, like, who do you guys think you are? And I'm like, well, we're not professional belly dancers now. <laughs> but it was really cool. So I think... I think one thing is when those opportunities do come along, don't overthink them. Just do them. Like, just try them. Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? You look terrible belly dancing? Right. Who, who cares, right? But mm -hmm. I think the other thing for me is um, I don't feel like those come along enough. And that was really specific and really cool. So I'm kind of obsessed with trying to find ways to, like, do weird, like peak, like, gra like a scratch the itch of my curiosity about stuff with online sources. Okay. Right. So sure. there's a, this program called, um, that's not a program. It's like a subscription. It's called masterclass. And I haven't, I'll admit Annie, I haven't actually done any of them yet, but like you can take, um, like wine tasting, like to, it's online. Like mm -hmm. it's online. There's, how to like write a screenplay, just kind of cool and out of the box things. Yeah. So I think there are resources, I guess, is my point. You know, if they're not coming right to your, like, I'm sure not that those kinds of things don't come to Wimbledon a whole lot, but I bet some no. of them sometimes come to Jamestown, right? Which isn't that far. Right. Sometimes I think we just need to be more intentional about scooping up the opportunities that do come our way. Right. I don't know. What do you or, think? What do you think? Or about? be the catalyst for change and like, let's get some wine tasting going here. What would it take? And how right. can we make this happen to help support local businesses? Like here, you could host this at your whatever shop or, you know, granted there's legalities that go behind everything, but don't be afraid to try those kind of things. You know? yeah. And granted it is change. And some people in a small town might look at you like, who the hell are you to be thinking we can do all these things? Right. Give it a go. Why not? You know? But yeah, yeah, I love the whole idea. Like the, the world is your oyster now with everything that's online. And I have found that like you have helped me tremendously when I quit my job and decided to work from home, your community seriously has helped save me and like realizing like, nope, I can reach out online and find some new people and get my tribe set. Right. Um, and real people like you can meet real awesome people, but you've got to be willing to show up. Right. We've talked about that so much that if all you're thinking about is whether people will like it, then you're mm -hmm. going to attract the wrong people. Right. Because they're liking only a, a filtered version of yourself, right? It's not, it's not the same. Yeah. So yeah, you definitely have to manifest it. I mean, like even my girl, my girlfriend's from college, like one lives in the cities, one actually lives close and, you know, in, in, in Jamestown, but we try and meet now once a month for like a book club and just a, a chat. And I was inspired by that through you and your Zoom calls and your, you know, 
happy hours that you do online. So there's so many things that you can do to still kind of re-energize that gypsy soul within you. If you're, you're like, your deep conversations is what you're seeking out. Right. You can figure it out. Just be open to the idea of it. Right. I, I love this so much, Annie. I think this is going to, I think this is really going to speak to a lot of women that, that hang out with me and watch the right. show because I just, this is something where um, I would say that when I, when I started doing the kind of work that I'm doing on my own, like outside of a more of a corporate environment, mm -hmm. I remember being so frustrated and I still get frustrated, frankly, by the advice that, well, if you don't like it, just change it. Like if the environment's not right for you, just leave it. That so much of the conventional wisdom and advice is like, just leave it. And then, right. you know, I don't move, move somewhere that inspires you. I hated that advice so much because like, I don't feel stuck in Oaks, but I'm a little bit stuck with him. <laughs> and he likes what he's doing and farming requires land and land can't be moved. So, I mean, what is, what, how does that support or honor or nurture somebody when that's the advice? It's, it's crappy advice. I think it makes more sense to say, what can I do with what I have right where I'm at? Right. to, you know, to create the feelings I want to have to spark joy. You know, that's why for me, um, this core desired feelings thing has been really cool. It's been a really different way for me to look at where I invest my time and my energy. Yeah. And again, it's not like any one model is perfect, but goals never really did it for me. They always felt a little too cerebral and I'm already fighting most of the time to stay out of my head and back into my heart. Right. So this whole idea of core desired feelings, it's like at any moment I can say, what could I do right now to feel a little more playful? Mm -hmm. Right. And it's a choice. If this is how I want to feel, then what am I doing to contribute to that? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I can't wish I could hear what he's saying, but I just love that. I'm hearing the little isms back there. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So, um, I think, I think this is, I think this is awesome. And I, I, the work that you're doing is so valuable, not just from the sleep standpoint, which is obviously a large part of what the, the core of your business is, but what else do you do? And where can women find you if they want to seek out your support? So again, I work with, with ages birth to, birth to adulthood. Like if you're down for having some tough love come your way, like the gentlest tough love you can have about changing your mindset about sleep, I'm your girl. Like I'm going to help you with some natural remedies, but you have to be open to the idea that I might introduce some saging of your bedroom. <laughs> like, um, and then with the pediatrics, it's nice and gentle. Like only, only come to me if you're ready to get some sleep. Okay. Yep. I, I'm not there to mess around if I don't think you're going to follow my plan. I don't want you to confuse yourself or your child about it. Like, I'm just there to help you. I'm not there to show anybody or judge anybody about their situation. I'm just right. there to help you. So, um, so people can find me and my sleep services, um, zensitconsulting.com or okay. Facebook, Instagram. So, yeah, come follow me. Okay. Um, but I'm also, like I said, I'm a Reiki practitioner as well. And mm -hmm. I think that kind of has sparked a lot of this getting into being one with the earth or whatever spirit guides you want to call them, God, um, my religion, um, just getting more into my Zen state has helped me with the Reiki. Um, and it's almost about energy healing. And so my mantra in life is just that you're capable of it. We just have to allow ourselves to do it, you know, and then if you need to add in whatever Western medicine techniques that we do need, because there's, there is still a place for that stuff. Let's do it. But I mean, there's, so I do Reiki sessions. I can do them online too with people, um, teaching them some different kind of guided meditation stuff. Right. Just help feel Zen. Like that's my word. That's what I want to help people feel. And whether you're in a big city or a tiny town, like you can master that. Right. And what I love about this again, like all of it, I love all of it, but um, you just said it. The idea that, you know, we're speaking specifically to that, um, that gypsy soul, that spirit of adventure kind of that wants the hustle and exhilaration. I think for me, it's the exhilaration. It's almost that adrenaline rush. Right that I get when I'm surrounded by a lot of people with a lot of activity. But what, since Zen is specifically your word, I mean, let's be honest, you have to be damn intentional about it in a big city too. Right. Otherwise your energy can get really frenetic and crazy. 
Don't you think? Oh, big time. So big like time. when I, I get overstimulated, when I go to big cities, I'm just like, holy hell, I can't handle this. Like I need to go then, you know, kind of decompress a little bit. Um, so, and as a, as an occupational therapist, like that sensory is my jam. So like I can be overstimulated and then, yep, I need a hot minute to go get in my Zen state to, to decompress and get back to my, myself. Yeah. yeah. To ground myself. Um, but yeah, like I remember just that feeling of the hustle bustle energy when I was a server in college at Perkins for Pete's sake. Like, so like if you need that kind of adventurous spirit to yeah, just go get a side job at Perkins, go work at Subway. <laughs> bartend. <laughs> go bartend. You can drink somewhere and find these kind of activities and I don't know, maybe squash that part, but <laughs> <laughs> you would say. But I'm just saying like, there is opportunity everywhere you look. And so I have a lot of people who are like, Oh, well, my job doesn't allow that or this and that. And just always like, make it happen, make it happen in your job somehow. Just changing the attitude in general about your job. And like, how can I add some adventure to this? Right? Well, it is it is a choice. It's a choice to nurture it. Right. And I, that's, I would say that's probably one of my biggest frustrations too, is at some point I look at people that, because I, I think there's, we get all of us, I struggle, I still struggle with this and I know you do too. Mm -hmm. So it's being able to catch your own kind of self pitying talk that keeps us as victims, right? Cause it sounds very victim like to be like, well, and it's almost like we take on that Eeyore kind of yeah. voice mm -hmm. like, well, the company won't let me. Wah, wah. You know, everything just sounds really down. Hard life. We right. Hard life. And at some point I just look at people and I'm like, well, s if you say so. Yeah. Because that's what this is. If, if right. we say so, then that's what it is. So we're going to find validation of what we believe, no matter what it is that we're looking for. So why don't we choose what we're looking for? Right. right? If right. we think our town sucks, we're going to find plenty of evidence to support that. Oh yeah. So it really is a mindset. It's a decision to say, okay. It's huge. And it's not, it's not easy. Like by no means is it easy. Like I have had in the last two years of starting my business, that was like my major mindset change that I'm like, I'm sick of being unhappy. I'm going to change it. Like, what do I need to do to change it? And I decided that like, my work environment wasn't for me. And I was terrified. I'm like, Oh, how am I going to get healthcare? Well, I guess I'm going to pay for it. And I did, and I do now. And like, I just kept finding these natural remedies and stop, like I stopped saying no to myself and mm -hmm. I stopped letting fear dictate my life. And I stopped letting the negativity dictate my life. And I just went with it. And I know it's not easy for everyone. I'm not saying that like, Oh yeah, it's just quit your job and go be a stay at home parent and find your Zen. No, you got to still work, but you have to believe that there's more in life and more adventure in life and more that change is okay. It's scary, but it's okay. Like, cause I think, by no means. I think the, the core of what you're saying is that we need to remember that being stuck is a choice. Right. Right. That there's always something different and there's always a, a different choice to be made if you choose to see it that way. Right. You know, and so it, it, it isn't, and it's never easy. I mean, I appreciate you saying that cause I say it all the time. Like, I get that it seems easy, but it's not. And I actually still did it. I did it. You did it. It all depends on what it is that you want. Right. You know, to get adventure, you don't have to like wholesale quit everything. And, you know, right. then you might as well just move to Bali or wherever you're going to move to, right. you know? And hey, if you, that's your thing and you're able and that's what you want, do it. Like mm -hmm. do it. I just wish more people would realize that they are creating their circumstances by the way they're choosing to view them. Right. And I will tell you, like, there were some major sacrifices that came with me choosing to live more positively. Like, yep, we are, I, we went from a nice, decent income to like, holy, I'm trying to cash flow a business and in the red, you know what I mean? Like, but I am so much happier right now, even though that I have minimized my lifestyle tremendously. Like, right. we live in a cute little love shack in Wimbledon, North Dakota. It's still perfect for us, like in my family, it is a house of love and just full energy. I love it. So don't like by no means think that I'm like, Oh yes, yeah, so let's just go be all frivolous in our spending and whatnot. You have to make sacrifices to get to whatever, you know, happy place you want to be. Um, but it's, it's doable. hundred percent doable. worth it. It's totally worth it. Like the last two years have been 
the scariest and happiest. Like, so when you have those mixed emotions coming together, like, you know, you're in the right spot. I feel okay. like that's really cool. Right. And totally it, agree. It's a hundred percent though. Like it's still a struggle for me. Like I still have terrible thought processes about an energy about living in a tiny community, but then I try and change it around about everything that's so positive. Like I'm so close to my parents. I'm so close to my in-laws. My husband can come home and quick say hi to me on his lunch break. Um, my kids are in such a safe environment. Like, so I have to remind myself and I have to gratitude journal every single day to make yep. sure that I am trying to find the positives in my environment. Major thing for me too. Major thing for me. Like deciding every single day, what's the good, what was right. the good in today? Right. Because it, it, and I think that's important for everybody. I, it's not specific to us in small towns. I just think sometimes in small towns, and I, we talk, I talk about this all the time, yeah. And because it's smaller and there's less people, that means there's less distractions. That means your life is more on display because there's less people to distract everyone's attention from. But that doesn't, it doesn't mean that you have to like live small. Right. And small is very a relative word, right? A un, I know you know what I mean by that because you and I hang out and we talk a lot, but I just, it's about the fact that you still get to make choices. Yes. Big time. So... Such a great little chat, Annie. Seriously. It was fun. My soul feels refilled. Me too. Me too. So any like last minute parting thoughts from my Zen master friend, Annie? I just think that just know that you manifest it. Like you manifest your life. Like think positively. Positivity will come your way. And just Amen. Karma, baby. Karma. Yes. F. Do you ever look around your small town and feel like there's zero inspiration to be found? Well, I can totally relate to that. And yet I really truly believe that the best way to stay inspired is by choosing to find little easy ways to get those hits of inspiration. And that's why there's a whole section in the small town survival kit that includes wallpaper that I created with motivational, inspirational messages on them, including the books, the apps I use, and the podcasts that I listen to that make me feel like I'm not so small just because of my small environment. So grab the link and get your copy because it really is all about the little things.